What's happening? Holy smokes, it's been a minute since we did one of these. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Oh, Boys shit. are back in town. <laughs> Look at this handsome group up on the panel. Aren't you ladies <laughs> lovely? That's right. <laughs> it, uh, it, how's everyone three, doing? All three sporting the facial hair, too. What do you know? Fuck yeah, man. That's right. We're there's, rocking there's, it. There's wisdom in facial hair. Absolutely. Why, I have no I, idea. I think so. There's definitely wisdom in facial hair. Yep. And, David Bingham, how's it going, buddy? Well, you can do this with yeah. facial hair. You can do this. People know you're, you're deep in thought just by doing this. <laughs> yeah, there you right? go. Yeah. <laughs> that I, I guy knows. Look Look at these. Yeah, until you do it too much and you end up kinking it off to one <laughs> side. <laughs> and you look like the winds. Laura on. Lee. What's up, Spike? So, CW. And I so we're here. This is this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, a thing for the 80s, and I'm here rocking the Johnny Bravo look, so. My bad. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. That's all right, though. Like the idea started yeah. in the ease. Note, note that's only the Johnny Bravo from the shoulders up. You know, from down below, it's like uh, Sigmund the Sea Monster. So. The uh, Ghostbusters Empire started in the ease, I believe, 87 or something. Everything started in the ease. It did. Everything yeah. Yeah. Millennials what a great the era. Everything the millennials know today started in the 80s. Yes, it did. Started, right? MS DOS, Windows, mm -hmm. the internet. Uh, uh, Y'all never, never had to go through that sound of. You know, while you're no, trying to connect no. to my phone and have somebody pick up and go, I've got to make a call. So kids, this is the kids today it. could. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, my fault. Go ahead. We're the eight. We're we're again. We're not just nations separated by a common language. Uh, eight is in the UK, very different to eight is in America. So we 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 really consumed eight as culture in the eighties, American culture in the eighties, um, more than we ever have done. So it was about, but I think it was a cultural exchange. We sent Culture Club and Duran Duran your way. <laughs> yep. Sure did. <laughs> so that's what we said, and then we got right. the fuck. Oh. Oh, crap. But that was, I mean, so for the eight. I know, cool. I know, kid. Go on. Yeah. Uh, what, what it was, it no. was when we started sending a lot of our um, musicians to the UK to America. So it was the first time like UK bands since the since the the, the Brit invasion in the sixties. Yeah. Um, we didn't really have an impact mm -hmm. at all in America in the seventies. In the eighties, Brit bands became like huge globally oh, yeah. because I mean a lot of them had had big hits over in the US, and it was kind of unheard of at that point. But suddenly, um, we've got bands over here that are making, and that's all thanks to the synthesizer. They discovered the synthesizer yeah. was mad with it in the 80s, and it defined that era. So that synth sound is very, very edgy. You hear anything now, you're like, oh, shit. That's like, you know. That's a, that's that's actually a Yeah, really, absolutely. That's that's a good point. And, and, you know, something else with that, Scott, is is when the English uh, singers came over and actually sang, mm -hmm. it sounded, you couldn't pick up the English accent that much. Yeah. You know, it wasn't uh, until they stopped no, singing the joint. No. Right? <laughs> Again, that's because we we've, we've been fed this diet for America of American music. So they kind of sing with American accents. A lot of them do, they still do. I mean, that's that's kind of what you get. So a lot of the time, it's not until they start opening their mouths and you go, "Oh shit, okay, you're not you're not American. You're uh, you're British." Um, and there was a lot yeah. of that. That's one of the reasons I love the Beatles. I, I know mm. it's not an eighties thing, but I love the Beatles because they they never they, they they were like fuck it we're doing our we're doing yeah our we are what we are yeah yeah absolutely yeah absolutely this is us this is what you get yeah, yeah it's, I mean, people That's lost cool. their minds I mean we look at it we always look at stuff with rose tinted glasses so we look at the eighties <laughs> now and we yeah and we remember it of what it was what, uh, what so we remember it very differently we remember it how TV and movies will have us remember the eighties when the reality of the eighties was slightly different for me definitely. 
I mean, the one thing that you watch Stranger Things now, my yeah. kids are in theaters at the moment because they're watching Stranger Things. And they're saying, was everything all neon and colorful? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. The one thing no. people didn't talk about in here was how beige everything was, man. I remember going to McDonald's, was just like every McDonald's you went in, in the UK, definitely, it was like beige and brown. Everything was beige, brown, and kind of like tan. That's the color you got of everything. And it was like, damn. And it was like, and it wasn't all new wave playing on the radios. It was Phil Collins, man. You, could, you couldn't move in the 80s without hearing Phil Goddamn Collins playing everywhere. It wasn't Stranger Things, certainly not in the UK. It was it was strange, definitely, but it weren't Stranger Things. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> so, had, you had, for uh, example, uh, te te technology such as it was. I remember um, when the movie Battlestar Galactica came out in the theaters. The big thing for Battlestar Galactica was it was vibro sound. It rumble rama, yeah. <laughs> if you looked, they they closed down the front row of the theater and lined the entire floor side to side with these huge goddamn subwoofers. Subwoofers, yeah. And and, and you could be sitting in the back seat and uh, oh, oh, yep. oh, oh, there, you know. It was only you know, damn. There were only you two know? movies that used that. It was developed for Earthquake originally. So Earthquake was kind of one of the last, the, the big sort of in the 70s, there was a big movement for um, disaster flicks. And Earthquake was one of the last ones. Airplane in 1980 killed the disaster flick because you couldn't take him seriously after that. So Airplane was a parody of all those disaster yeah, flicks. <laughs> and yeah, and uh -huh. Airplane killed the disaster flick because then you just can't make one. Um, it's, yeah, it's a twister, it's a twister. <laughs> but it was, it was Earthquake. Right, yeah. So the, the rumble sound was developed for um for Earthquake originally, but there were complaints that um, lights and fixtures and things were falling out of ceilings in um, cinemas because it was it was that strong. It was like if you were watching a movie, if it was like multiple screens and you watch a different movie next door, you couldn't watch it because that rumbling was from all the subwoofers was just disrupting your film. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was bad, a nice idea, badly executed. And and the sad thing yeah. is, you know, talking talking about movies. You know, there were so many good movies that came out of there. There were also a number of movies that you could really never, ever, ever do again today. No. Stuff. But we got stuff like the Star Wars. The TV shows. Out, Star Wars came out in the 80s. <clears throat> my, my, the, the movie that, that's my sign on, Good Morning Vietnam, yeah. uh, you know, came out. Uh, you got, uh, what was it? Spot, Spot gets to go talk to whales. Yeah. Um, that, that came out in the, in the 80s. I'm not sure. Yeah, what's, what's crazy about movies in the 80s as well, I mean, is there's a period of, I'd say, about five years, I'd say between 1982 and 1987. If you look at the movies yeah. that came in, in that time period, normally about half of them make anyone's top 20 list, which is insane. Um, because if, like, for instance, Back to the Future and Gremlins were released on the same day, Yep. The same day, yeah. yeah, that is a good weekend, <laughs> and um, it's mad, it's it's crazy. You look at it, you look at like 1984, everything came out in 84, is, it's nuts. Um, 84, 85, 86, the amount of movies that came out in that period that are just out and out classics now, yep. it's crazy. So, you had Gremlins, Beverly Hills Cop, Back to the Future, uh, The Goonies, E.T., um, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, and The Temple of Doom, and these movies just kept coming. Yeah. You had the, the, the Brat Pack right. movies. It was insane. Hey. The, the Die Hard series started. Yeah, started in the 80s. Everything this was is, original. This is, this is what, exactly. And this is what I kind of miss about movies of the 80s because you didn't know what you were going to get. So when it came to summer yeah. movies, ah. the big studios would say out there, this is what we're going with. And they'd all be originals. I mean, it wasn't... Yeah. The 80s yeah. when the sequel started. That's when we started seeing sequels heavy in the 80s. But they'd set their stall out, and this is what you're going to get. So one film comes to bring you Goonies, one comes to bring you Gremlins, someone else is bringing you Teen Wolf. And it would be... You know, it's all original, it's all new. The 90s is where the, the, the sequel really kicked in as a money spin. And now, by the time we get to where we've got to today... Everything is a franchise. It might not be a sequel, but it's part of a franchise. So we get Marvel movies, we get yeah. Fast and Furious movies, we get, you know what I mean? And it's like, can we get mm -hmm. some variety? That would be nice. Can we get some variety like it used to be? Because you didn't know what you were going to get. You know, it's like, back in the 80s, they'd be like, what's this, Terminator? Let's give it a go. You know what I mean? And that's what you get. You didn't know what it was. But uh, uh -huh. now, it's like, you know, it's going to be, you know, this year it's going to be three Marvel movies, 
maybe a Fast and Furious movie or a spin-off, mm-hmm. a John Wick movie. And that's, it's just formulaic. It's by the numbers now. There's no risk taken anymore. Well, and it looks like yeah, creativity. Even, it, it, even more than that, it looks like Hollywood has lost its mojo. Hollywood completely. has no more creativity sure. because we are so worried about offending somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, hey, I'm sorry. Merry fucking Christmas. You know, yep. and, if that, and if that offends you, oops. Monster Squad, George Dowd. <laughs> Oh, Monster Squad, man. Every See a classic. This club. <laughs> George say Anything. So for me, say, say Anything was the last great movie of the 80s, man. 1989 Say Anything was the last great movie of the 80s. It was the best. And it's, if yeah. you've never seen Say Anything, you need to, because it's it's the best. It's Because it's about nothing, really. Yeah. I mean, you want to say anything. And it's, it's just about a guy who don't really know where he's going in life, meets a girl, wants to be with her. It's a fantastic flick. It's just so good. Yeah, it's yeah. also where the techno, the techno. Yeah, it was funny. You know, we launched, we launched after Windows. You know, we launched. Uh, video miss you and I have. And, yeah. Oh my God! Look what look what happened from that. We're not standing yeah. in front of a, a a machine feeding quarters anymore, but by God, we are still as hooked now, if not more, than we were as teenagers. Yeah, I mean, eighties exactly. was the video, the video game boom of the eighties was insane. I miss, I miss blockbuster. Like I still to this day miss Blockbuster. The whole vibe of it, like yeah, you get off school Friday, it's like yeah. Now everything yeah. digital. It was another very thing. I mean, it, it developed in the seventies, but it, when it was affordable and it was in everyone's home, was the eighties. Yeah, and um, that changed everything again because I mean, it's like for the first time, a generation of kid had access had access to movies they didn't have access to before. It used to be if it wasn't on TV, yeah. if you hadn't seen it in the, at the movies. And you didn't yeah. catch it on TV. You haven't seen it. Yep. Yeah, that- it was crazy. I can remember. I like. I can remember watching Halloween on a an old Betamax copy. That's right. Halloween shouldn't have been watching Jeez. it. I'd have been, yes. I'd have been maybe, maybe nine years old, right? And we'd recorded it off TV, so it was very watered down. But um, thank you for that, brother. It's no way would I have been able to have seen that. With, you know, without VHS, it was even without video. It was amazing. It's funny you talk about Betamax, Scott. Um, I actually worked at a video, not not Blockbuster. Uh, it was uh, called the Video Store. It was a local franchise in, in Northern Virginia um, during that time and watched the the ultimate death of, of Beta, mm-hmm. uh, which is sad. Oh, yeah. You had VHS, which which their machines generally ran three heads. They were inferior, um, yeah. VHS was the yes. inferior machine, but yeah. yeah. And Beta had five, and Beta, the tapes were smaller. You could actually run more on them, um, but they didn't do the advertising that the that VHS did. It was the first time I can remember that advertising actually really killed something off. Um, well, it was. It was. It, I know it was. Um, it was. It was JVC and Sony. With with the kind of the fathers of those, so so Beta yeah. was Sony, that was their baby, and VHS was JVC, and there was another one that, that exited early doors, and I can't think what it was called. There was a third format, Laser and it really didn't last long. Laser disc players. No, no, this was this was it was video, oh, it was cassettes, but I can't think for the oh. life of me, I can't think what it was called. But they never secured um, licenses for movies, so you could never rent a movie for it. You could use it to record, but you couldn't you couldn't rent movies. So what killed what killed Beta was was JBC went and secured exclusivity with like Universal Studios and then secured it with Warner Brothers and then so you now can't rent movies on Beta anymore. So all the latest movies are going to come out on VHS. They might come out on Beta six months yeah. later. That was, that was the death of Beta. And that happened again. It happened in the noughties with Blu-ray and um, HD DVD. Yeah. Same thing. It was. It was. There were two machines, and, and Sony were not going to lose that one. So yeah. Sony were like, "You ain't doing this to us again." And they they played JVC at their own game and uh, won that one. But it was um, video was huge. To their to their credit, Sony did run away with the TV. They focused on the TV. Yeah. So you know, like, all right, we're going to get fucked on the beta, but you know, you got to have something to watch it on. So mm-hmm. we're going to do the TV. And to this day, um, people. We'll still, and I'm one of them. We'll still swear by Sony TVs. Mm-hmm. Now they're more yeah, expensive. Yeah. They're more expensive than than a lot of the other ones. And and to be perfectly candid, a lot of the other ones are just as good a quality 
or or nearly as good a quality, but they don't have the the Sony um, you know, warranty and, and the and the, the name and the you know it's branding is is what it is. So that was another that was another very interesting thing as well. I mean, Japanese technology became like fully embraced. I mean, Japanese technology in the eighties was huge. I mean, so we went from the come on, who, who didn't have who didn't have muscles from an arm from carrying a boombox? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember the boombox. So All the stereos had to be huge. That's what it was. All now it's like they're tiny. You yeah, play everything. D batteries in the back of one to get it to work. Is only like <laughs> yeah, it's sixteen uh-huh. powered by sixteen D cell batteries. You know? <laughs> it was that like twenty bucks just to get it to work for an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, let's just hook a car battery up and carry that shit around. You know. See, I remember all that. We, we used to have like a, a swimming pool by us, like a leisure center. And I can remember the, uh, I would have been young, I would have been about seven or eight years old, but I remember um, kids breakdancing outside of it. I can remember oh. they'd, they'd turn up with their roll of um, lino, they'd, they'd lie it out and they'd be breakdancing outside. I remember that, man. It was bad. It was awesome. Yeah, you don't yeah. get something like that these days, and that was it used to be amazing. You just these kids just rock up and just start break dance on the streets. It was incredible. Yeah, this these days you get more of the street musicians than than mm-hmm. dancers or anything else. And that's that's a shame because some of those some of those folks really did have some moves too. Yeah, um, to to watch them, um, which was where we got movies like Breaking, mm-hmm. which was really I'm sorry, I thought it was a cool movie for its time. Yeah, you can, at, you can look at me and judge. That's fine. I don't care. It, seems it, was, it was. Everyone was breaking when it came out. I mean, if they're not aged well, you watch them down, you're like, oh my God, what even is this? <laughs> but at the time, I can remember, they were a big deal, those movies. Was it Turbo with Ozone? Weren't there two guys from Breaking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Turbo, uh, if I'm right, yeah, Jean Claude Van Damme. I believe Jean Claude Van Damme made his movie debut in Breaking. He's dancing in the background. Is he right? right? Yeah. Well, I got to go back and see that. <laughs> It's even yeah. going to break in two, but hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jean Claude Van Damme is dancing in the background in one of those movies. Okay, that I got it. That oh, I got to go back and see. That's fucking hysterical. Jean Claude Van Damme we not, dancing. We got to touch on the Nintendo too, because that's like started an empire back in yeah. back then. Yeah. Took over uh, Atari. Uh, it, the Atari is what got it all started. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, got it all started. Right, Pong was his own system. Who doesn't remember having to fold up a piece of cardboard, wedging your hand and the cartridge in, and then wedging the, the cardboard in <laughs> to keep the fucking cartridge in the Atari? Yeah, I, uh, and, you know. I remember that. And you got that square one stick with the with the with the the, the one button, you know. This and this <laughs> the Atari beautifully proves my uh, my point from earlier about how brown the eighties were. It had a wood veneer. Yeah. How many video consoles have wood veneer? The, the original Atari 2600 <laughs> had a wood veneer. It's like just brown wood. And you're like, no one would go for that now. If you walked into Sony with a PS6 and went, we're going to make it wood, they'd laugh your ass. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Everything had wood veneer in the piece. There was wood paneling in the houses, on the, on the, on the station wagon. Shit. There's no wood on everything. Here's here's the fun thing is I, I, over the last two years Misty and I've been looking at uh, at, at houses um, we're we're not moving anywhere y'all are stuck with us but um, one of the things that we've seen in a lot of the ones that are up for sale is either full paneling or like half paneling with paint yeah. on the top you know so it's like it's coming back mm-hmm. you know, especially distressed wood. What's so, the eighties is coming back? That's what makes me feel old as hell. The fact that a generation I lived through has now become cool. And it, it must have been more what it was like when people lived through the 60s. Like, I mean, we used to wear that. I've probably still got some of those. And now that I've been on the 80s, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, I, used to, I used to own that. <laughs> I want to see, uh, all right, here's what, I want to see what happens when parachute pants come back and, parachute and, and the hammer dance comes back. And this it's going to happen. And this asshole okay. man is sitting up there in front of everybody. You know, I can't touch this. I'd say what's mad as well. I mean, this is, again, when we talk cultural shifts, it's kind of the shift yeah. in, in generations where it's slowed down significantly. Yeah. Because uh, someone pointed one out to me the other day, and I'm like, that's mad. 
And it was, if you, if Back to the Future was set today, so you set that movie today, the guy travels back in time to uh, 1998. And you go, oh, shit. That, wouldn't, that wouldn't have quite the cultural impact that the original had. Where you're like, oh, yeah, because he goes back to 1955, and they're like, oh, we, we don't know this music, and we don't know this, and we don't know this. You go back to 1998, there's not that much different. No. <laughs> They've got slower internet. <laughs> like, oh, hey, look, I remember that. Oh, shit. Hi, Reeves. How you doing? Hey, right. So, so bigger cell phones. Well, that's the only difference. But it's like you can turn fifty-five to eighty-five. Huge difference. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, it's crazy. I think we have an old Atari somewhere. I bet it's still. You could but... you could you could drop kick an Atari down a flight of stairs and it would still work. Yeah. Right. Not not like the like not like old Nintendo Cube. You know. Well, you sneeze near a Nintendo Cube, and it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, I will say this, you know, it was um, when when my son was born, and I know it was it was old at that point. Um, but when when he was a little kid, you know, I got him I got him a Nintendo Cube, and uh, that's where he and I got started. Super playing Monkey Ball together. Uh, it was actually um, Super Mario Party, where that was fun. The, they had they had all the the different go kart games on all the different go kart tracks. Yeah. And hey, the old man would kick his ass on the ship every time. So yeah, game had, is all about Super Monkey Ball and Animal Crossing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we had we had a lot of fun with that. Um, we actually uh, and, and Chris, I know this this will uh, resonate with you and Scott. I'm I'm, I'm bet it'll probably resonate with you a little bit. But uh, playing Fortnite together with uh, with That's my cool. son. Yeah. You That's know. Cool. So, it's, the, the one for me that's still really got it is my my eldest son is really like really into Stranger Things ridiculously, and he's fascinated by all of it. They ask me questions all the time. Was it like this? And I go, it was kind of like this. So I mean, this is an exaggerated version of it. But he asked me about video stores, and he asked me about the mall, and he asked me about arcades, and I'm like, yeah. I see, you know, it kind of was. And I'm like, it was. Um, he's fascinated by the concept of latchkey kids. It's fast yeah. button, and he's like, because again, yeah, because kids. I mean, certainly in the UK, I wouldn't dream of letting my kid out um, until like we used to. Well, um, no. it's totally, yeah, it's totally different. It's I completely mean, different. When I was, when I was, I used to ride to the park when I was like eight, nine years old. I'd ride to the park on my bike, and just there'd be a bunch of other kids there. We'd hang out. The lights come on. Your ass goes home. That was it. That's how it used to work. Yeah. Um, but now, hell no. <laughs> There's no way I'm letting kids do that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, I remember, I remember as, a, as an elementary school kid, uh, we, and, and let me preface this, this is not one of those, hey, what, through four miles of snow just to get to school? We did, yeah. but yeah. We, we would walk, we would walk you know, like two miles uh, through the neighborhood, down through a wooded area with a, a footbridge that got washed out every time there was a big rain. Yeah, uh, you know, and, and when that got washed out, you went 50, 60 yards down the creek to where the exposed gas uh, line was, and you you tiptoed across that gas line, and then walked back up the the, the, the bank of the, the creek to where the path was, and went on to school. Um, you know, and oh my God, hell no, you wouldn't do that today. It, you know, we used to go and play all day long in the little nature preserve down there. It wasn't really established. It just was an area that nobody developed. Um, you know, and, and we'd go down there and we'd have rock and stick boards. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd build uh, the, the model ships uh, and yeah. stick, stick an M80 down inside it with an extra long fuse and light yeah. the fuse and set it off. Uh, you know, Hello, yeah. Boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, BB gun, BB gun wars. You can't do it that too late. If you're going to send your kid out by him or herself, you better make sure that they've got a, that they've got a, a nine millimeter that they're, they're trained in how to use it. And, right. you know, and, and nothing like that. So, it's just, you can't, you can't do anything. You can't let your kids out of your sight anymore. No, no, you can't, man. You can't. You can't. So. You can't. And it's sad. And I think they're missing. I think there's certain rites of passage they're missing as a result of that. 
Yeah, because kick it's can. kick the can. Exactly. That was, that was a fantastic game. Yeah. But you'll never have that nowadays, you know. No, I mean, and this is the thing. There are there are certain very strange rites of passage that they're missing. I mean, it's like no kids ever waited for his turn at the arcade. You know what I mean? Where you put your soul down. There's no thing anymore. There's, there's, and there's a bunch of things like that that just aren't there. Even cell phones. So, like, if you ever had to call a girl and you pray to God, her father didn't answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Well, <laughs> it's that, like, we well, don't have to get past the parent. It's like, yeah. That was that was the other thing. You're talking cell phones where you're not where you're not connected. You know, roll back a ways and the primary house phone was on the wall in the kitchen with yeah. a hundred foot cable cord <laughs> where you ran down the hall to your bedroom and shut the door and you're yeah. standing inside the door because the wire wouldn't go any farther. And that's what I mean. These are there's those strange rites of passage that we earned that they're never gonna experience. Find an old Playboy in a bush somewhere. Kids ain't gonna experience that shit anymore. It's like unless people are dumping hard drives in there, that's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's uh, these are all these things. So my kids fascinate by it. Ask me all the time, like, well, I'm like, yeah, it was. I said, so it'd be. I remember like summer and the summer holidays, summer vacation. It would just be you ain't. My mum would tell me you ain't. You ain't being under my feet all day. Go to the house. I'd leave the house at ten thirty. I wouldn't come back until seven o'clock that night. You know what I mean? And it's such a quiet get into adventures. And and what was our sunscreen? Dirt. Mud. It's dirt. Oh uh, yeah. You know, I remember. I remember one summer down at Virginia Beach. We went out and I laid out like a dumbass on one of those inflatable rafts in the shallows, you know, where the, the, the you know, blow me back in and then I'd paddle back out and blow me back in. Um, by the time we got done for the day, uh, I went to lay down and I had blisters the size of golf balls on the back of my thighs where, where I got baked because we didn't fucking use sunscreen. You know? yeah. you know, there was no, I heard a really funny one. It was about the difference between Generation X and, and the baby boomers. And it was how come Gen X look younger than boomers did at this age? And the answer was because our parents knocked us into the middle of next week so many times we're missing about eight years of our lives. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> and that's, that's, yeah. When, that's when you could use corporal punishment. Oh, but that's that's a man yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nowadays, you go to lay your hands on the kids. You got to look around the parking lot, make sure there's mm. cameras, or you know, you know. Any other, I, yep. I took many an ass whooping. It's <laughs> oh, yeah. it was part of it. The worst thing than taking an ass whooping, I think, if you ever been around a buddy's house when he takes an ass whooping, that's just the worst, man. That was uncomfortable. I, I'd experienced that more than once. It was like, ah, oh, shit. You know where? You know where I really realized I lost it is is when I saw a parent tell a kid this not too long ago tell their kid to go get a switch so the little fucker comes back with that that uh you know gaming system thing <laughs> I'm like, you tell us to go get a switch that that was a month that was a metal game back in the day you're that was some... standing, you're standing at the tree looking going all right well let me see here yeah like that one they're just gonna send me right back out now that one's gonna break my spine oh right, shit. That yeah you know, that was some sadistic shit. Go, go, choose the weapon. I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> 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 That's the longest walk man, you're ever gonna make in your in life. It was like, it was yeah, horrendous. Yeah. yeah. Did you, my did you imagine? Had, my mother had like master sniper accuracy with a slipper as well. Like oh, no yeah. matter how far I thought I'd get away, that thing would get me straight in the back of the fucking head every time. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't. And it didn't. It didn't, matter, you know? it didn't matter if you went around the corner. Somehow they knew how to get it around the corner and get yeah. you. Yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Uh, we our, ge our generation can laugh about this. You say this to the other generations that listen to it and go, "Oh my god, that's horrible." I said, "No, it's this how we grew up, man. It's just I don't think we're scarred by it. I think I think it was it was it was what it was, man." Yeah, you had to. You actually yeah. had to work for medals and trophies in sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no participation. Oh, there was a man. I remember it was brutal. They used to do a thing over here, and it was sponsored by. Uh, I want to say it was BP, British Petroleum, and it was like a. Um, it was a fitness competition, so they'd start measuring you at the start of the year, and then at the end of the year, they give out these trophies. 
Um, and it was all based on the star that you got. So like the highest I gets five stars was like, you have to be like an all, like an athlete to get that. Yep. And it was all right down to, now they'd give them, everybody would get at least one star. That's what you'd get. You know it would. So even if like you, you, you didn't even show up, you'd get one star these days. But then it's like, yeah. no, you ain't get nothing. You get nothing. So even one of the kids was walking home with nothing, right? Like I can remember it happening at my, at my school. There were three kids that didn't achieve one star. And I'm like, <laughs> that's harsh, man. I mean, even when I look at it, I'm like, Man, that seems wrong that the three kids are like, wow, so literally every single kid in this school is better than me. That's <laughs> some sort of sport about dang. And it's like, yeah, you're not even getting a stick, nothing. It was like, there's, that's, that's hard, man. there's entire baseball leagues here for kids where every kid hits. Every kid like runs or like it's just run the bases basically. But I get there's no that. Outs. The, the problem with that is is we don't adopt that in later life, right? So I get it. Yeah. If, if, if we decided now that everyone at work earns the same amount of money, everybody at work is going to get the same promotion. Every, I get that because all you're doing is setting these kids up for failure, man. Exactly. Kids need to That's learn how to doing. lose, too. You're not going to win every time. You if, you're telling to kids, too. if you're telling kids now, kid, you're always going to win. Don't worry. You're always going to win. You're always going to... You're setting them up for a, a, a very, very harsh oh, reality when they become adults. Oh, shit. Well, and, 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 you know, it's funny. Nowadays, you have this thing going around called the Darwin Awards. Yes. I'm sorry. We lived the Darwin Awards. When we lived the Darwin <laughs> Awards, we were, thinning, <laughs> we were thinning the gene pool so that the strong survived and the dummies, well, I'm sorry, they just didn't quite mm -hmm. make it. And it was right. Amazing. They didn't make it, you know. Uh, but but nowadays, you know, you wrap everybody up in bubble wrap and, and <laughs> yeah. bubble wrap. No oh, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> there were reasons why some people didn't make it. Yeah, there were. And that's, that, that's, may be rude, that's, that may be harsh. I may have offended some folks. This, I'm sorry. Not really. You know. You ask any athlete, any athlete at all, champion athlete, uh, about loss. Typically, the reason why they became as good as they became is because they tasted defeat and didn't like it. So determination kicked in, like, you know what? i got to be better. i got to be better at this. I don't like losing. And that's how they became, you know, as good as they became. Yep. But if you just tell it's, I mean, it's why you get those shows now. When you get things like American Idol and shows like that, and you get those just nutcases turn up that can't hold a friggin' note, and they'll stand there auditioning, embarrassing the shit out of themselves, it's because they've been surrounded by people telling them, kid, you're fantastic. Yeah. And then they turn up to each other and it's like, you know, you, 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 you're you not doing them favors by telling them they're wonderful at something when they're not. I, you know, I'll give, I will give credit where credit's due on one thing. It, it Shows like that have allowed the niche you know, right, bro, people that have been in the rap. shadows that, that, you know, to, to come out like that. Uh, you know, the one guy, I, I love him to death. People think it's, it was crazy and it was crappy, but the, the trampoline dude. You know, if you haven't seen the trampoline dude, he's 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 hysterical. Mm -hmm. But in our day, you know, people would have been uh, no, and just no. About oh yeah, guys. completely. Right. I mean, again, if you look at the music industry and also definitely the movie industry in the eighties, if you weren't beautiful, oh, yeah. forget it. It doesn't matter how talented you are. If you're not beautiful, if you are not the the archetype, we got nothing nope. for you. And that was the nope. way it was. So shame. I mean. It is, because, I mean, at least with inclusion and acceptance these days, I mean, everybody is getting a fair shot at things now. So you are seeing a talent come through that you wouldn't have seen before. Because, right. again, definitely in the music industry, it's like, okay, if, if we can't sell you as someone beautiful, if we can't sell you as – and it was never about the talent. It was about how beautiful are you, which yeah. is why you yeah. get things. It's why you get um, people that weren't really singing. It's why yeah. you get Millie Vanilli. Do you not know I mean it's like right? Because Millie Vanilli were models, right? So the actual guys that were, were oh, models, God, yeah, right? So there. we'll use them as the faces yeah. and we'll use someone else as the voices because the guys that are doing the voices ain't as attractive as you. And yeah, we think no. we can sell more if we if we get models to do it. And that's that's what happened, man. Yep. So it's the way right. it was. It's why there are there are a bunch of actors in the eighties where you look at them and go. I, yeah, I, yeah, how were you ever this? Because they can't act for shit. It's not that they were no. beautiful. Hey, you know? if, you grew, if you grew up in the 80s, I'm going to tell you what, if you grew up in the 80s, you understood we could share a Pepsi. And yeah. not, oh, yeah. We could drink water from a from a garden hose. Germs weren't a thing in the yeah. 80s. They were, that they was, that's a fucking new age. <laughs> Germs weren't a thing. Made you stronger. 
And that's can you imagine funny. kids today? Can you imagine kids today trying to go through a pandemic, like in the eighties? Like if they went back and had to go through a pandemic with like no Wi-Fi and you know they what, actually this, had to like this use came up. Imagination. I spoke to a buddy about it, and I said to him, because it was he was saying to me about we had kids over here that were breaking the lockdown rules, right? So they were they were beating up, and I said to him, "Come on now." I said, if this had happened when we were 18 years old, right. said, do you think we would have obeyed it? And he's like, I'd like to say we wouldn't. I'm like, no, we wouldn't. I said, we didn't have, we wouldn't have had, I mean, the, the pandemic happened at a time where thankfully we had technology where we can do things like this, where we can right. talk across the seas and we can communicate with each other. We've got hours and hours and hours of streaming footage. We've got news on demand. We've got the internet. If this, if that shit had happened in the 80s, <laughs> It would have been a nightmare, right? Because it's like, so I can't, I can't go anywhere. No, so that, that's it. You've got the, the eight video games you own. That's it, right? That's got to see that's you through. That's got to see you through this. Um, you can't go to Blockbuster. Um, you're going to have to wait until five o'clock this evening for the news bulletin to find out what is going on at the moment. When you, it would be hellish, man. So oh, I said, yeah. to me, it happened in, in like 1998 when I was like 18 years old, 19 years old. I, nah, man. I said to him, there's no way. I said, I know full well we would have been meeting up and getting drunk three or four times a week. I said, I know we would have. So I wasn't as harsh with the kids that were doing it because I'm like, I get it, man. This is your young days and you're missing a big chunk of them. Yep. And I'll give you another one. You drive through any neighborhood today (laughs) and count the number of bicycle jump ramps that you see. Maybe, Maybe one hand. Rewind back to the 80s, you drive through that same neighborhood, and you were in, you know, medium to high 10 digits. Everybody was jumping, you know, whether you had a BMX bike or whether you had one of big ass long banana seat bikes. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know the book. <laughs> <laughs> and, and half of us learned yeah, that okay. uh, when, when, when you miss the pedals, when you land, <clears throat> you ended up with, uh, you know, testicles in your nostrils. Yeah, I you know what right? I I scared the crap out of myself when I was I would have been about nine or ten years old I think and they built a BMX track like a full on BMX track oh, uh, at, yeah at a hill near where I live and I'm like oh well I gotta I gotta ride this um <laughs> oh man right so it started with a huge ramp right down and then a, a kicker to come off of I'd never hit a ramp like that in my life right. Um, <laughs> Fortunately, I hung on, right? But my God, I sailed off this thing and I came down with such a thud, man. I was terrified. It was like I was in the air for an hour. (laughs) Jesus, I came down with such a thud. And then I've got these kids going to me. That was an amazing jump. And I'm like, it wasn't meant to be. It was pure fluke. I didn't come off this goddamn bike, right? I should have have lost my teeth or something. Never did it again. I was like, that was absolutely terrifying, man. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. And Derek with the slides, yep. You oh yeah. Either had, the, either had the steel one that fried your ass by the time. Yeah, you put on sun for twelve hours. Oh my god. The or playgrounds. Like, you ought to see the playgrounds nowadays, man. They're all like foam, and even like the the earth is like foam. It's like artificial concrete. Eight. That's what we had. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 I know. I live by a park I used to go to when I was younger, and what <laughs> there, was, there, was a, there was a swing set. Uh, there were slides, and there was uh, like the most lethal um, roundabout, like uh, merry-go-round, yeah, spin thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Concrete. That was it. I remember concrete, broken glass. That's what I remember being over there. And it's like if you come off, you come off. That's it. You're gonna know about it. It's like, well, you better hang on. Yeah, yeah it was. It was bad. But those those slides, man, were the worst one as well. We had. Where it was like metal panels, but rather than one complete metal panel, this one is slightly buckled. Oh, yeah. So it was like a yeah. freaking cheese grater. So you'd have to know when to go. Kind of <laughs> right. Going to avoid this thing, taking just an inch at the back of your thigh. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or out of your ass, you know. You come home and go, oh, Mom, we got lunch meat, you know. It was so, brutal, man. But uh, fun is what, what toughens you up, man. It's, it's what, you know, it's part of it. If you didn't break a bone or you didn't have a scar, you were living too soft. It wasn't that simple, you know? Right? Yep. Yeah. The monkey, <laughs> bars, the monkey bars with the, the big geodes that you climb up, you know? And, and you know, you tried to hang from them upside down. And invariably, what did you do? You'd either break a leg because, you you know, you couldn't pull your leg out of it right. Yeah. 
<clears throat> you know, or you fell and it's like, oh shit, you know. We had a yeah. climbing frame that was like it was like a dome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was just concrete underneath. There was no yeah. sand. There was no, it was concrete. You come yeah. off that. You, but what's mad about it is this park was grass. It was almost as if well, just leave the grass. Why did you make concrete down to make it deadlier? It's like, just put a frigging grass. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's for later when they need it as a, uh, you know, a, a bomb shelter, you know. <laughs> Cover over the top of it, and you got uh, concrete you can stand on. It was mad, but yeah, those those playgrounds, man, were they were still fun, but yeah, they were dangerous. <laughs> oh, yeah. The uh, remember the spider? Did you ever get on one of the spider climbers? <laughs> so do. <laughs> spider. You, you climb up, and then all of a sudden, the leg bends back down, and you're like, <laughs> "Now what? Yeah. What, the, what, the, what? Oh shit! What do I do now? You know." <laughs> Last stretch between the last one and the spider itself was like one and a half to two times. So you get your feet up there and you lean forward and you hold on to the spider. Where do I go? <laughs> so yeah. it was mad. I remember all that stuff, man. And you think it's nuts that those things existed because people think you're making it up. You, you see them and say, no, you find old pictures of me. You go, no, that's, that's kind of what we played on. The old, the, old, right? the, the, old, the old medium sized swing sets where you get you get any of the bigger kids on it and you start swinging aggressively and you get the, the leg that goes uh, yeah I remember that never got anchored in the, in the concrete or anything you know I'll tell you what, the ultimate dick move when I was a kid right? you, you'd go over to the park to play on the swings and some kids had taken them and you know they'd wing them so oh, yeah, it's all around, 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 around. Oh, you asshole. <laughs> best day, one of the best days of my life was when I got, when I figured out how to shimmy up that pole yeah. and, out there and unwrap it. Man, I, I turned into a hero for the, the younger kids. Like, you, oh. ever see a, so. you ever see a girl get a pig tail or a plow or a break trapped in the chain? <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, how, about, how about when we tried to swing high enough so we could launch ourselves and fly? <laughs> Oh yeah, that was safe. How many times did we fail on that? <laughs> yeah, you got to let go on the back swing. Time, otherwise, you let go on the back swing, you're in trouble. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. that, that was that was actually one of the Darwin Awards. Was you watched a kid? I'm going. <laughs> you know. I remember that again. The, the lethal thing. We we twist the swing to try and wrap the chains up, and then let it go, so it's spinning around the other way. <laughs> Oh, man. Start kicking the other people beside us because we're <laughs> spinning. <laughs> or, or, or the worst one, the worst one where you had the tire, the old tire, <clears> and you and you spun it like that, and you spun oh, it down where your fingers got caught up in it. You know, because there's there's several of you doing it. Let me tell you something. Yeah, that whole new zip go to pain. I remember uh, the, the, when you see kids twisted on the swing, and as the more you twist, the shorter the, the chain gets. So you start yeah. going up higher. Now these swings that we used to play on had really long chains on them. So you got some older kids that were going to help you. They weren't helping you. Twisting this thing right until they're like, there's no chain left. Just to watch this kid, I'm like, this kid's going to travel through time when they let that go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The best, the best one is when you push them off and they start going. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's actually, all over I, the damn place. I actually watched a kid puke one time doing that. One of the one of the kids spun him up, and, and you know they got halfway through. It's like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like a sprinkler. <laughs> what about the, what about the toys? We were talking about the toys the other day in the eighties. Yeah, you know, lawn darts and. Uh, yeah. Wood burning kits, and shit. Lawn darts, man. It's like right there's. I mean, who's the genius that, that, that thought that <laughs> chemistry that shit chemistry? for an eight-year-old? You want to talk about a Walt? That was Walter's grandfather. That's got to be what that was. Oh, yeah. You know? GT, what's up, buddy? Hey, I got a little bottle of nitric acid, you know, the hydrochloric acid. Check it out. What is yeah, it? Let's go. Cool. Oh, what does this taste like? like? Let's go. I ate through my, my desk. That's awesome. I remember having it. It was one of those sets, and it came with what they called a Bunsen burner. But it wasn't a Bunsen burner, right? It was like this ball that you filled with methylated spirit, and you put a wick in it. I think uh -huh. that had, that's a Molotov. That's what that is. That's, that's a freaking petrol bomb. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
But there's me on my desk and I'm sprinkling iron filings on this to make them sparkle a magnesium ribbon. Yeah, the magnesium <laughs> right coming off that shit. <laughs> You lose an eyebrow, you know. <laughs> you come downstairs. Oh, it was good times, though. It was good times. I mean, this is the All thing. Right, it, it genuinely was good times. You you try and explain it to people now. It sounds horrific, right? It sounds like it was horrifying. It wasn't like that. Yeah. It's no. like it just, it just wasn't like that. It was fun, man. It was wow. insane. Some of the shit we did. It's so many good. I was just about getting your ass beat. I'm like, it was just part of it. I'm like, it wasn't, it's not like, you know what I mean? People are like, that's wrong. And I'm like, yeah, kind of. I'm like, but at the time, it just, it was quite normal. And it's like, yeah. we used to have a friend whose mum would beat him on every word, right? And we'd piss ourselves laughing. This was funny. We used to do something really mean to this kid as well. <laughs> when his mum would beat him, she'd be saying something. How many times have I told you to the world? Oh, shit. I'm going to kill him. Like, yeah, I'm wrong, man. You, learned, you learned to run. Yeah, you did. You you did. Run. <laughs> but that was, I mean, again, it was that was it. But the lights came on, it was time to go at home. That's how we knew. So it was that was our beacon. Well, the lights oh, came yeah. on. Get your ass on. What's up, Blinker Food? What's There's up, our buddy what? down there. Shit, we got some people coming in here. Hey, what else did we have? We had um uh fuck the toys were so cool back then though. Like the toys were cool, man. I mean again, this, this is something like, I miss as well because oh. I think part of it is laws changed regarding advertising and kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the toys that we loved, um it, you got a question, did we love them because we loved them, or did we love them because we had been just subliminally tricked into you are going to love this? So uh, it was uh, like Every every toy had a cartoon, and that cartoon was a, was basically a thirty minute commercial. That's all it was to sell you another toy. So you yeah. know, you watch episodes of Transformers, Mask, um, He Man, any of that. Typically, they introduce a new villain and a new hero in every episode, and the reason why is so your ass will go out and buy them. That's why it was done that way. But man, it works. <laughs> it works on me. Do you guys remember Clackers? Yeah. Lethal. Two balls on a string, like a bolus. Exactly. It was a, yeah. What was it? We were training people to use a bolus. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is with clackers? Is it became like the longer the, the string, the better you were at it. So you could have like a long ass string with two. So you, you're doing this, but the longer that gets, the more likely it's that things that are wrapped around your neck and just garrot you. <laughs> right. Well, or, or you got to the point that, and I got to admit, I was one of them. You got to the point where you'd hold on to the one ball, and, and you actually used them as a an bolus, and they worked too. Lisa, I don't know if you do this uh, in America and Canada and whatnot, but over here there used to be some of those massive, right? That was Conkers, right? Mm -hmm. So Conkers. Conkers, right? So basically, this this was this was poor kid entertainment. So. What falls and falls chestnut trees is the seeds like a ball. It's like a gun. We call it a conker, right? Yeah. Okay. We put a hole in them, turn on a shoelace, and you, you fight with them. You, you'd smash someone else's conker. And the idea being you'll break theirs or they break yours. Whoever breaks first loses. Um, and this was a big deal. It still was up to about five years ago. Well, they introduced this thing in schools and we were like, are you taking the piss? If you want to play conkers now, you have to wear gloves. And you have to wear um, eye protection, and you know, but really, and it's like taking wow, a conquer, really? to, taking a conquer straight to the knuckles is a rite of passage. That's the way it is. If you're going to play the game, you have to accept the fact that at some point, some kid is going to hit you in the knuckles. That was that was that's the game, and it's like, yeah, oh. it's if you don't like it, don't play it. Yeah. Exactly. If you can't stand the heat. Get out the kitchen. We used to we used uh, to think, we used to all kinds of just. Up things as well. We always think it was wraps, we used to call it when we play cards. I don't know if you ever did this. Or whatever it was, was if you lost, you'd sort of slightly spread the cards and you'd take a wrap to the knuckles from a deck of cards. You ever do that? that? Oh, oh man, yeah. that worked. But that was you guys, yeah. you guys ever play bloody knuckles with the quarters on the table? Mm -mm. You, you, you do like. Yeah. You take your thumb and you like slide. They have to hold their knuckle down like this on the table. And you'd have to slide the quarter. And yeah, you got your knuckles all chewed up. 
Swedish stupid shit like that. Oh. Um, we used to play all that. We used to play oh, slaps, and it was all kinds of shit. And it was we used to feel, I can't remember what it was where if you lost, you had to stand against the wall, and they just kick the ball at your ass when you yeah. bombs up. We used to call it bombs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dodge bombs up. Dodge <laughs> ball. Dodge ball. I actually, with that I, rubber ball, oh man! I'll, I'll give you one. Watch the watch the guys. Watch the guys on the panel. What? Watch this. Tether ball. <laughs> oh, tether ball. Let's go. Now the reason the reason they're laughing is for those of you that that, that are millennials and beyond. Uh, <clears throat> tether ball is this thing where we would put a solid metal shaft in the ground that was probably about uh, ten to twelve feet up. At the top of it, yeah. you had a rotating um, uh, or, or non-rotating, depending on you know how it was set up, uh, ring that had a string attached to it. That string was about 10 feet long and attached down to a rubber soccer ball. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was a shitload heavier than a soccer ball. And when it was pumped up full as rubber, because of how thick it was, it was hard, and I'm gonna like, act in the face with it. It had break glasses. I've seen it break noses. Uh, I've seen it wrap around people's necks. Next. You would take two people standing on opposite side of this pole. One of them would start it and smack the ball around, and the ball's tied to this rope. and And the idea was to get the rope wound all the way around the post until the, 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 the ball was in there. So obviously you had to start moving closer and closer and closer and closer. Oh, it was to the ball of death. Oh yeah, that was yeah. good times. Yeah, 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 yeah. what was that? <laughs> nuts, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I myself nearly broke a wrist because I had people that would, one of the tactics you do is you'd hit it where it would go arcing over the person on the other side. Well, being taller, I used to jump and, and try and get it. Well, the damn thing wrapped around my wrist one time, and I came down, didn't quite reach the ground. So, oh, man. Yeah, I hung myself by the wrist. <laughs> those those games aren't allowed in school. Do you guys remember Red Rover? We used oh, yeah. to play that. Yep. Red Rover, Red Rover. Send yep. Michael over. Oh, yeah. Red, red light, green Please. light. Red light, green light. Yeah. Oh, as long as they don't play like Squid Games. <laughs> Squid Games or whatever the hell that thing was called. We used to play, I don't know what, what it's called over there. We had a game called Bulldog. And it was Bulldog. the way it worked was one person would start. So you'd have like 100 kids play this, right? They'd be along this side of the field. You'd be like the one guy there. <laughs> and it would say cross and they'd all run, right? And you'd have to grab one and just sack him, basically, nail him to the ground. Once you've done that, he's then a bulldog. So you've got two right. of them. Eventually, you end up with like 90 kids. <laughs> uh, once tackled and 10 left and got through the ball. No one ever won. No one ever won a bulldog. It always ended in someone being nah. so injured that that was the end of that. And it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's an awesome game. Well, yeah, you got one person piled under 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've been in scenarios where there are like two people left, and there's like 98 bulldogs, and you're like, well, go then, you got to go. And it's like, where are they going? There's nowhere for them to go. Yeah, I just walk up, I just walk up and lay down. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just, I accept my thing. Yeah. We used to play uh, Kill the Carrier. It was like football, but no rules. You just had the ball. If you had the ball, you were getting fucked by both sides of the just yeah. everybody. Yeah. Capture, tackle, capture the flag. Tackle, capture the flag. Uh, uh, I like capture the flag. Yeah, that was that was, that was the thing. I'm gonna tell you what was supposed to be. Our our scout troop was supposed to be two hand touch, capture the flag. Oh hell no! <laughs> that shit always ended up as tackle the flag, and and you got two teams of roughly thirty. In a park, oh, and yet we're talking about benches, concrete, <laughs> yeah, uh, holly bushes. Which let me tell you something: don't ever fucking get tackled in a holly bush. <laughs> sucks. You end up with stickers in places you don't even want to talk about. Uh, oh shit! Oh yeah, but man, I'm telling you what: you want to be a sneaky motherfucker when you were doing that shit. <laughs> Special we'll be... play after dark. We used to play like football or soccer, I guess you'd call it over here. But like poor kids, we'd be playing with a tennis ball, right? And it would be like 11 aside. They'd be like 50 aside. 
One turn is four. And we used to do this thing, this is so messed up, but like stinging nettles, which I suppose like poison ivy over there, we yeah. thread it in uh, in our sneakers in between our laces. So when you tackle someone, you, you rub it against their legs. Dude, that's cold. <laughs> I know, right? That's brilliant, but it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> oh, snap. I love it. Fighting over the last chair, musical chairs. Yeah. yeah. We had some <laughs> hardcore musical chair matches. <laughs> You know what? We used to years Everything. ago when I was when I was a teenager. I used to work for a guy that ran like uh, he was like a DJ, like a mobile disco. He'd, he'd go and set up places, and um, we used to have a, an adult version of musical chairs that we made out of this um, this like felt flooring that we had. We cut these footprints out and we throw them around. These were great fun when it was like a party where people had been drinking, and it was like musical chairs. But the difference was there was no limit to how many people could get on a foot. So when the music stopped, you had to get to one of the feet. So you could hold someone, and you could so you could get three people on one feet, and we just start taking the feet away. Oh, and then, but we'd never eliminate uh, anyone, right? So that was that was how you made this fun. No uh, one gets eliminated, even though they're playing uh, on the floor. We'd be like, no, 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 he's still in, he's still in. So we'd keep like sixty people in the game, and only leave like two footprints at the end purely to see the carnage. <laughs> oh shit! This is be this like a mosh pit. Hard. I'm gonna take you outside. This is this is one here. Um, the 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 sprinkler that he's talking about also came with another deadly toy for kids in the '80s called the slip and slide. <laughs> oh, the slip and slide was great. You're talking about the slides that had the the, the metal joints where you, you you ended up peeling off parts of your skin. Man, people would put a slip and slide down on any damn thing. People put slip and slides on concrete, put it down on gravel. You know, people put it down on hills and you end up going past the slip and slide through the grass. So you got green all over you. Yeah. And then, oh, shit. Into the sticker bush. Yeah. And, and uh -huh. I mean, that's, that's another rites of passage where that, that pure joy, that unexplored joy goes to horror in one second when you realize you've took too much of a run up and your ass is coming off the end of the slip and slide and no one knows where you're going to end up. <laughs> it's like, it's good. Or for those of us Let's that go. And, and put a jump at the bottom of the hill, <laughs> slip and slide. that rite of passage, boys and girls, is called the time slowdown. Oh, shit. <laughs> Because I'm going to tell you what, you get down to the end of it, and like Scott said, you realize you're going way too fast. Time stands still. Oh, yeah. But you never learn. You never oh, learn. Every, every single time you go for a slip and slide, yeah. no one ever tried to judge it where, like, I'll get the no one ever judges a slip and slide. Like, I'll get the timing just right so I stop at the end. It'll always be, what is the hardest, fastest I can run at this thing? Uh, <laughs> you would learn, right? So, yeah. Oh, the worst one, hey, baby. The, the worst one the worst one was when they took the water off and you tried to go down the thing dry. Oh my god. Uh, oh, ow. That's not so bad for you girls because y'all always got to wear the one shoe. But for us guys, man, I'm a oh, yeah. there's a bunch Carpet of men burn. running around. There's a bunch of men running around at our age. That will never have hair on their chest or their belly. Yeah, we just we just buffed that shit off. <laughs> oh, we burned it all off. We did irreversible damage. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we did. Oh shit. But that was I mean that was all part of it. And I said going back to the toys with slip and slide and things like that. We did have great toys. I mean, we had like, awesome toys, oh, and yeah. it was from the, it was the era of the action figure, man. It really was. Oh yeah. yeah. And this is the thing. It's like I now, like I know so many other people, I'm spending my time trying to find the crap I used to have on eBay, and I'm overpaying to get it back. Right? Yep. I tell you what. Right? I, I, I was the oldest of four. I have two younger brothers and a younger sister. When Star Wars came out, hey, uh, Misty. I, I, had, I had been one of those guys and, and, and watched the guys here because <clears throat> I'll nod their heads that it had the full-size 12-inch G.I. Joe action figures. Yeah. And that was, that was an action figure. Yeah. No, for guys, they were not dolls. They were action figures. Action figures, figures. yeah, absolutely. Very, yeah. very specific mm. differential. Anyhow, I digress. My brother started collecting the little miniature uh, Star Wars uh, figures, and he collected all okay. of them from like the beginning. 
He also collected the, the, the X-Wing and a lot of the, the, the original, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Death Star and the, and the other stuff. And it found its way up into the attic in a box. And when he turned old enough and went off to school, to college and, you know, moved out, took that with him. And I look at the prices on that stuff now and I'm like, yeah, oh, it's not. The boy, the boy it's not. Millionaire, you know, based on, on some of that stuff. And he had, the, we, we lost some of the parts, you know, like some of the, the blasters and we, we, oh, yeah, I think I played with, we ended up using colored toothpicks for some of the lightsabers, you know, yeah. a lot of those too. But he still had all the original stuff on some of them, and I'm like, damn, the money he could have made, uh, and I hope he did make it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's mad. I mean, it's like I'm sort of from what I do on my channel. I mean, a lot of what I do is kind of eighties and pop culture based, and a lot of the models that are popular at the moment that people are building are all kind of eighties, seventies, eighties pop culture. Night Rider is big one at the moment. A lot of people are building the Night Rider. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because again, you see that it's just instant nostalgia. Like, oh, damn, and it, it's absolutely it is. yep. Ninja Turtles, yep. That see, this, Ninja Turtles is a good yeah. example of what I talk about, about the difference in 80s America and 80s England. We were so far behind when it came to things like Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles didn't really land in the UK until the 90s because it took years for stuff to catch up here, so it was like. He-Man, for example, Masters of the Universe, when that became popular in the UK, it was around about 83, 84. Whereas I think it already it had done about three years in America and was probably on the decline when it landed in the UK. We were so far behind on um, TV and pop culture and cartoons and things like that. It was ridiculous. Yeah. So like even movies, if a movie was released in America in June, it didn't really get released here until maybe December or January. So we'd be about six months behind. On, on all these things. So we had incidents where a sequel had been released in America to something where the original hadn't been released in the UK yet. So Ninja Turtles for me um, is a 90s thing, but I know it I know it was definitely an 80s thing. But um, over here, yeah, it, it, it's, it's class of 90s because we just didn't get it. And I've told you before about this. In, tell, tell, in, tell, tell, them the, tell them the turtle story. <laughs> yeah, so in, in the UK, the, when the, the Ninja Turtles launched in the UK, they had a deal with uh, BBC, which is the British Broadcasting Corporation, which is kind of like everyone's got it. Um, and they had issue with the word ninja. They thought yeah. it was too violent. Um, so there was, there was no way that was going to happen. So over here, when they launched, they were the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. To the point where they they even re-recorded the soundtrack. So the theme music was the theme song was re-recorded to have the word hero in it. Uh -huh. So we didn't know. So because the internet wasn't a thing, we didn't know it was Ninja Turtles. We just knew it was Hero Turtles. That's all we ever knew it as. Um, and also over here, nunchucks were illegal. So you yeah. never saw you never saw Michelangelo with the nunchucks ever. Um, they cut those scenes out, or it would be a slightly different edit. But you never saw him with nunchucks ever. Um, huh. And it wasn't until the video game launched over here that had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles playing. For it. We were like, "Wait, what? Did they just say ninja?" And it was like, it was like <laughs> "Shit, they're lying to us." And that's what we found out that we lied <laughs> we like to. And it was, yeah, it was, it was mad when we we found that out. It was like, God damn. And there was a lot. Of, there were a lot of strange incidents like that of things that just kind of got diluted for um, for the British audience um, unnecessarily. I mean, I, I, once we all knew, we all knew, but it was like we all refused to call it Hero Turtles at that point. It's like it's Ninja Turtle, and then they started changing the packaging of things, and now it is Ninja Turtles. So my kids only ever know it's Ninja Turtles, but oh, I've I'm... still got, I've still got things because I was all over the turtles when I was like ten years old. Um, I've still got things that have got Hero Turtle written on it, which is crazy. But yeah, it was the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles in the UK. Just a weird thing. But yeah, that happened. The movie as well was a problem. So the movie launched with Ninja Turtles over here. Yeah. But the big thing of the movie is at the end, um, spoilers, it's 30 years old. <laughs> but uh -huh. a Splinter wraps nunchucks around Shredder's um, spear and throws his ass over the, over the ledge. Now, because you couldn't yeah. show nunchucks, you don't see that. So in the edit, what actually happens is he runs he runs at him and Splinter just sort of 
throws him and you're like well hold on there's a bit where he, talk, he talks shit to splinter before he lets him go but that scene's not wasn't shown because you'd see nunchucks so yeah. all of that is cut out so there's a scene as well with mikey where um he has like a, a nunchuck sort of like battle with a foot soldier where he's sort of showing off and doing the flare and all of that was cut out of the uk cut of that movie but Aww. that was one of the most pirated movies ever because it was released like six months before um, it arrived in the UK. Pirate copies of that on VHS flooded the market. I mean, everyone had seen that movie before it was released here. So oh, we, all watched, we all watched these really bad VHS copies of it where some were black and white and grainy and shit. And then when we went to the movies to see it, we noticed the scenes had been cut out that were on the American pirate copies that we'd seen. That's how we knew this stuff had been cut out. My like, God damn. And um, yeah, it was it was harsh. But yeah, Ninja Turtles was very 90s in the UK. It wasn't an 80s thing at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it definitely was. I mean, it definitely was an 80s thing. But over here, was so far behind, it just it just wouldn't launch. Did, did yeah. You guys, did you guys get the 18? Yes, we did. Okay. So when the 18, the 18, the 18, 18, I think we, I think the 18, we got pretty soon. TV like shows like that, like Dallas. I think we were about three months behind on Dallas. Okay. Um, so again, you couldn't do that now. Like, who shot JR? We'd know the next day. Whereas over here, like, no one knew. Even though it was like three months ago, it had been revealed in, in America. Over here, no one knew. But um, what for things that so we get Street Hawk and Airwolf and Knight Rider and Manimal and crap like that, we'd, we'd have those, I'd say, about six months to a year after they, they aired in America. Um, so we did we did get we got a lot of that and this was the strange thing so in the 70s not so much but in the 80s all of a sudden we had a lot of american television was being screened um so we we were getting all those shows that were coming out like the a-team like airwolf and all those things we were getting reruns of um starsky and hutch starsky and hutch arrived here really late it had been running for about three years before it landed on on tv over here so again starsky and hutch was on very much in the 80s even though it was a 70s show all right, um, let me try this one. Let me try this one on you. What about V, the final battle? You remember yes. that? So V was huge. When when V was on over here, V was massive. That was a really big deal. Um, so that yeah, I I can remember watching V when I was a kid. Yep. Um, so V was a really big deal. Salem's Lot launched around about the same time as well. Salem's Lot was a really big deal when that aired. Um so we did get them. We did get those those shows were shown over here. Um, if they were a really, really big deal, if they'd been huge in America, the, the TV corporations over here would stump up the cash and they'd get them a little sooner um, because they knew it was a hit. Whereas something mm, they weren't so sure about, we'd be waiting six months to a year till it arrived over here. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, what about what about the WWF? See, no, again, right? So the WWF was never, was never shown over here, and not until... Really? Yeah, eighty nine. It started being shown in the UK, and that was because that was that was the first year we got um, satellite and cable. So satellite and cable TV wasn't a thing in the UK till about nineteen late nineteen eighty eight, early nineteen eighty nine, and even then, no one really had it. So it wasn't it wasn't really available. So they would they would tour over here, so you could definitely go and watch them, but you couldn't. It wasn't being broadcast anywhere. Okay, um, I, had, I gotta check this one because this this might have rubbed wrong with with british culture what about baywatch mm. yeah no we have baywatch and baywatch was shown on like saturday afternoons it was on about four o'clock on a saturday afternoon that was the thing oh, that yeah. show would not get made these days let's be real right yeah, that, no. that show would not get aired because we all know what baywatch was about it wasn't about david hasselhoff saving people from the water yeah. it wasn't that's not what baywatch was about that's yeah. not what anyone was watching baywatch for that's right. Everybody uh -huh. wanted to watch Pamela Anderson promote water safety. Come on now. In slow yeah. motion. <laughs> what about my favorite show, The Bundies, Married with Children? Yes. See, again, we got that, that today. That was on the night. And again, it was it was a really weird one, that, because it, it, it was shown in the UK really late at night. So it was on at, like, midnight uh, on a weeknight. Oh, wow. That was the only time you could see it. And uh, me and my brother used to watch it. We used to love it. But... um. So we, I remember my, we had a babysitter when I was younger. Um, and on Friday nights over here on Channel 4 would be just American sitcoms. 
So to sort of introduce us to all of it, so on a Friday night, we'd have uh, Cheers would be on. Um, what else? There was one called ER, not ER, not the show everyone knows as ER. Before ER was on, there was a there was a comedy, like a sitcom called ER. That was on as well. But we'd watch all those. We'd watch Roseanne and we'd watch, um, uh, was it Laverne and Shirley? Yeah. Was that a sitcom? I think it was called that. What? what say it again. Laverne and Shirley. Oh yeah, Laverne yeah. and Shirley. Yeah. So that Golden Girls. So all of that would be on on a on a Friday evening, and it would just be it would be start at like seven. It would be on till one in the morning. It would just be different shows. Bam, 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 bam. And um, that's that was kind of my intro introduction to American kind of sitcoms and comedy. Um, so that's that's where we saw all of that. But, I mean, I lapped it up, man. I was I was I was into it big time when it came to american movies and whatnot i was all over them so i was a, a movie freak when i was a kid i still am now but when i was a kid i, I couldn't get enough of it so i mean i mean even i mean look so my, these are my my keys i've got i've got a terminator hanging from my key ring i've got et <laughs> hanging from my key ring that's all awesome. i've got a hoverboard I got it. I reach anywhere in my room. I'll pick up something eight. There's, I guarantee it. It's just uh, it's covered in the stuff, man. Let's, so let's I yeah, I lived for it. Let's go with one for the for for all of us geeks, and this would apply to all three of us. Mystery Science Theater three thousand. I love that show. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, that was a great show. Uh, which I think they morphed into short attention span theater. Short <laughs> <laughs> so. I love that show, man. No, but it was like the the eighties. I mean, the, the amount of TV shows that's from the eighties I absolutely adored and still do to this day. Um, and some of them are great, some of them not so much. You go back and watch them now and go, oh, I remember this being better than it is <laughs> now. Uh, um, no, it was. It was. I mean, the, like the eighteen is so formulaic; it's ridiculous. So the same thing happens every week in the eighteen, right? So it starts off where the CIA, the FBI can't find the 18, but some guy in a small town somewhere that's getting trouble off the local hood can pick up a phone in their van. <laughs> <laughs> so the, yeah. the CIA can't find them, but this guy can. And it always, always accumulated in the 18 being locked in a barn or a shed or a, a, a garage with an old vehicle and some power tools. And, you're, and they come smashing out at the end in some tank they just made. You'd think one of the guys that captured them would go, is that a blowtorch they're using right now? <laughs> but it never happened. Same thing every week. But we loved it, man. We wrapped it up. Well, all, all that was was split personality MacGyver, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> split personality that was, that was, that was all, of, all of MacGyver's, uh, you know, uh, uh, schizophrenic, or not schizophrenic, but uh, what is it? Uh, what is it when you got multiple personalities? Bipolar. What, what's the term? Bipolar schizophrenia. Personalities. Is it schizophrenia? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Don't get old, folks. You, you lose words. They're up here, but you can't get them from here to here. The weirdest right. show I can remember, right? And it wasn't, the show wasn't weird at all. The last episode was weird. And people think I'm making this shit up. But it wasn't until the, the, the advent of YouTube. You can go and watch this and see for yourself. This happened. Um, my same <laughs> baby said that introduced us to those American sitcoms lapped up um, Dallas, uh, Dynasty. And there was a spin off of Dynasty called The Colbys. Um, and I think it ran for two seasons. And she was obsessed with it, right? So we watched all of the Colbys. In the last episode of the Colbys, which is a fairly formulaic soap opera, yeah. um, the, the lead character gets abducted by aliens. What? I swear to you. You can YouTube search Colby's finale. And what happens? It comes out of nowhere, right? She, she's driving on the road. And... It, the story's kind of wrapped up. It's the last episode. And this thing comes across the radio. Um, the, oh, strange lights have been seen in the sky. Over, you're like, what? And then all of a sudden, this UFO lands in front of her. She gets out and walks up the ramp, and they take her away. And I'm like, did that shit just happen? And people, for the longest time, you tell people, I go, that never happened. You go, it did. And then it looks like it was mad. So this is another one as well. This is... This is a true story. I nearly got in a fight in a bar in New York. I think I've told you this story over an 80s show, Fraggle Rock. Yep. Right. So Fraggle Rock was massive in the 80s. When I was a kid, loved it. I had to Fraggle the whole thing. 
And it came up in a conversation at a bar I was in in New York. And I said, this guy said about, um, oh, yeah, you went through the hole in the laboratory to get to Fraggle Rock. And I went, no. And he said, no, you didn't. I said, it was in a lighthouse. And he said, no, it wasn't. It was in a laboratory. I went, no, it wasn't. It was in a lighthouse. I said, so there was a guy that lived in a lighthouse, and they had a dog called Frocket. <laughs> <laughs> and, went to track and they got to Fraggle Rock. And he was like, no, it wasn't. It was in a science lab. So me and this guy get into it, right? Because I know I'm right. And he knows he's right. And we're arguing about this shit. And I'm like, well, we're going to come to blows. It's not until then. A French guy pipes up and tells us we're both wrong. And it was a bakery. And we're like, no, this guy's our enemy. We're like, who's this asshole? <laughs> like, it definitely wasn't a bakery. So we're now going to kick this guy's ass, right? Turns out, depends on what country you watch Fraggle Rock in, depends on what the wraparound thing at the beginning was. So in the UK, it was a lighthouse. It was the opening sequence of Fraggle Rock was set in a lighthouse in St. Ives, and that's where they filmed it. In America, it was a science lab. And in France, it was a bakery. So we were all wow. right, but at the same time, all wrong. But yeah, we nearly came to blows over that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, big old scrap over Fraggle Rock. <laughs> if you're talking, seeing as you're talking about bars and, and restaurants and things like that, uh, another one we introduced the chicken nugget in in the eighties. Yeah, chicken nugget. Oh shit, chicken nuggets. Do you know what? Did you did you have the TV commercial for those where they were dressed as paratroopers that were jumping out of an airplane? No. Right. Well, we did chicken nuggets. So yeah. So in the eighties, we had this. We had this commercial. For um, chicken nuggets, where um, they'd all jump out of the plane. They were like little paratroopers. They'd all jump out with parachutes on. And then one of them didn't jump. They'd all jump out and land at a dip. One of them didn't jump. And it was number six. Like, what happened to number six? Like, I think he's a bit chicken. That was the gag, right? Oh, my God. I knew a guy who, to this day, there's about 40 of us know him only as six. Right? When I first met him, he was introduced to be the. This is six. And the reason why is whenever we got in any kind of altera altercation or fire, like, he'd run off and leave us. <laughs> so he became number six. He became the chicken nugget. <laughs> so you're like, well, I'm to number six. I think he's a bit chicken. He the chicken so, nugget. so he became number six. Yeah. And, and Chris, chicken McNuggets were a trial launch in 81, but they didn't go nationwide until 83. <sighs> so. Do you remember, I saw this on, on the line the other day, and I completely forgot about it. So this thing drops out your head. Do you remember when they do the Chinese ones? They sell McNuggets in like an ornate Chinese box, and you'd get like a soy dip, and you'd also get um, chopsticks with it. I'd completely forgotten about this until I saw it. And I was like, Jesus, I remember that. And it's weird how those things come back to you. That dropped out of my head. But it was like, it was like McRib. Every now and then this would come round. And that oh, was, that was they, they do, oh, McRib. No ribs on those people lose their friggin' minds over McRib. Um, <laughs> over here, not so much. We have a thing, I don't know if you've got it there, we have a thing called the Big Tasty, which is like McRib. Every now and then the Big Tasty comes back and people lose their shit that the Big Tasty has come back to McDonald's. <laughs> big That's Tasty, funny. I like the name. Hey, here's, here's, another one, here's another one that dropped out that we think about every once in a blue moon, the Walkman. Yeah. So... The Walkman, I'd see, I, I love the Walkman. The Walkman, the Walkman was great. I mean, it was the first time in history where you could just cut off everyone and go, mm hmm, yep, no. And just let this, so you're done. Well, see, there were, there were two functional versions. The first one was the radio, the second one was the cassette player. Mm -hmm. the, the third one that came around, I was never really a big fan of because if you ever went walking on the CD or jogging, yeah. You know, it had worked for a day or two, and then as you're as you're running and this thing's bouncing around, yeah, it, it'd start skipping. Yeah, you and, and, oh man, yeah. nothing pissed you off more than getting into a good rhythm, and all of a sudden your CD starts skipping. Skipping. Oh, that'd make you better yeah. than shit. Yeah, so. it was, I mean, it's a it's a funny one. I mean, the the Walkman introduced of course, the headphones everywhere. Now it's less commonplace, but it's like I used to I used to use it. I still do. Um, when I used to get the train to work, I'd read my book and I'd have my headphones on. And for some reason in the UK, I don't know if it's like this over there, but the, if you pull out a book on a train, all right, guaranteed someone is going to stop you and ask you what are you reading. Right? <laughs> yeah. Always, right? And it drives me mad, right? Because I'm like, well, I'm not reading anything now. I've had to stop to answer your question. 
<laughs> I used to be very animated. They'd be doing this, trying to get my attention. And I'd go, so I'd do this very animated. I'd take my headphones off. I'd fold my butt, put my butt down. And I'd go, yeah. And they'd go, what are you reading? And I'd go, uh, Stephen King's son. And they'd go, is it good? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Do you know what I mean? And it, it's... It, so the headphones were, I did this as well this is wrong but I did <laughs> I was travelling oh, for a and I ended up so I'm travelling alone I ended up sitting down at this seat on an airplane and there's a guy sat next to me and I thought oh my god I, I've got a good protocol where it's like I'm a good co-passenger I'm not going to bother you I'm not going to steal your armrest but just leave me alone right that's that's kind of where I am with it leave me alone and um, he starts immediately and he's saying, I'm thinking for the first hour of the journey, we could talk about where we're going. For the second hour of the journey, we could talk about what we're going to do when we get there. For the third hour of the journey, we could talk, and I just, as he's talking, I went, mm hmm, and just put my headphones <laughs> on. So I'm like, yeah, I did this shit with you, brother. That ain't happening. <laughs> and that was the beauty of the headphone. You could just go, yeah, not today, sir. <laughs> 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 you'll, you'll, still get, you'll still get peeps like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not anti-social, but this guy who I've never met has just mapped out. Here is the next six hours of conversation you and I will be having. I'm like, no, we won't. Yes. <laughs> no, we won't. Not today. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. taking songs on the yeah. radio. That shit was a skill. Oh, yeah. I was talking. <laughs> that's, that's an art form. Yeah. Yep. Let's, let's, go, let's go to a different one. You know what else launched in the early '80s? <laughs> this is a U.S. thing, the space shuttle program. Oh yeah, I, oh, I mean, shit. well, you you gotta talk Challenger if you're talking the the eighties, man. I remember we all watched that as kids. That was some harrowing shit when Challenger exploded. Yep. Well, the Columbia, oh, yeah. Columbia was the first one that went up, April twelfth of nineteen eighty one. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember, I remember everyone watching that shit live when Thunder exploded, man. Did they have a teacher on board? Say what? When Thunder exploded. Yes. Was there a teacher on board? Yeah, that was harrowing, man. Yeah. Sally, um... Oh, shit. Now I gotta look it up. Do you know oh, there's still recovery pieces of that now? Oh, I believe it. They never oh, got wow. all the Yeah, they they vowed that they would get. They got every. They got the people. That took them months, but they vowed they weren't just going to leave their bodies out, out in the uh, in the ocean. They were going to get them. Um, but they're still recovering pieces of Challenger now. Wow. Let's see here. Wow, Pizza Demon, what's up, buddy? I haven't seen you in a hot minute. Let's see here. The Challenger was uh, Michael Smith was the pilot. Yeah. Um, James Smith? No, that's not. No, this is talking about the families. Never mind. Hold on. It was on takeoff as well, wasn't it? It was really early. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely was. Oh, yeah. But I remember the world watching that. And it'd be a man that shit's heroin. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was bad. There we go. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the crew member is Michael J. Smith, uh, Francis uh, R. Dick Scooby, Ronald E. McNair, Ellison S. Oh, God, I'm going to screw this up. That must have been the teacher. Onizuka. Um, S. Krista McAuliffe, McAuliffe. I think that was the teacher. Um, Gregory B. Jarvis. And Judith Resnick. I remember it because I remember I would have only been I would have been young man, I would have been seven or eight years old when that happened. But I can remember vividly that all of her pupils had gone to see the launch. Yeah. And then yeah. seeing them all that was what was all over the news, seeing these kids crying when that had happened, and it was like God damn. And I remember oh. everyone having this kind of false hope thinking they might be okay. And it's like they ain't okay. And I'm thinking, did you just see that? No one's okay, no one survived that. Yeah, no, you, yeah. yeah. It was instant. It's like no one survived that. That was insane. Yeah. The, the, like, the one saving grace for that was the fact that, that it was over instantaneously for yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. 
Nobody, yeah, they didn't you, know. didn't have anybody, you didn't have anybody dropping down going, oh, No, shit! I'm not going to. If something had caught fire and headed towards the ground, yeah. that would have been awful. But, I mean, it, it was boom. That was it. It was over. Um, the Again, yeah. sort of eighties, eighties news things that reached England, the, the most eighties thing I can remember, was, do you remember Hands Across America? Yes. That was the most oh, yeah. 80s shit that ever happened. I think that's the, that is the most 80s thing that's ever happened anyway. When that was broadcast in the UK, that we were seeing what was happening, there was talk over here of doing, oh, we do hands across the UK. We were surly people who were like, we ain't doing that shit. <laughs> I know in your fucking hand, there's no way. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you two bigger ones. Um, is uh, We Are the World. Yeah. Um, was, was huge. And uh, also uh, Comic Relief, which yeah. was... Uh, Robin Williams, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, and uh, Billy Crystal. Um, well, we do. It, we still do it here. So, comic relief happens every two years in the UK. That's been happening that's since cool. since okay. like yeah, since like 1982. We started that. Um, so every two years we have Red Nose Day, um, and it's so that's, that's still going now. But um, Live Aid that was a massive thing in the 80s as well. Um, yeah. Where they have the simultaneous concerts in New York and uh, London. Because even that, with bloody Phil Collins again, Phil Collins performed at both. Phil Collins performed at Wembley Stadium and then got on a, on Concord, flew to New York and performed there as well. So he performed at both of them. There was a really, that's what I mean, you couldn't escape Phil Collins in the 80s. You just couldn't. We all remember it being Prince and Michael Jackson and ACDC. It wasn't. It was still oh. goddamn Collins everywhere. <laughs> I, will, I will flat out admit I am a huge Phil Collins fan. I, I like Phil Collins, but I mean, let's face it. I mean, he was even on Miami Vice in the eighties, and it's like Jesus, he's everywhere. You couldn't get away from him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was oh. like, yeah, he he was like the eighties version of coronavirus. He was everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. There was a really they, they made a really funny show about Live Aid uh, about backstage at Live Aid in the UK. It was it was on a few years ago, and what it was was that the acts in the UK didn't realize until about an hour before the show started that going on early wasn't good for your career because mm -hmm. America was still in bed. So the show was yeah. going to start in the UK at noon. So in America, it was like 7 a.m. If you go right over to California, it was like 5 a.m. Right. So if you were one of those acts, no one was going to see you. So yeah. all of a sudden, Bob Geldof is running the show in, in the UK it's having a nightmare because every act has now gone, whoa, we're not going on at noon. And they're like, yeah, no, 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 I'm not going on until three o'clock. And they're just going, I'm not going on until four. And he's got all these egos in one place trying to get them to just oh, get on the wow. damn stage. And he's like, I am begging you, just get on the goddamn stage. And it was, they were like, yeah, no, 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 no. Because, yeah, they did it for free, but at the same time, they were aware that America's watching. So let's let's make sure we uh, we get maximum coverage here. And there are some people that, that made some really bad choices. So Queen had like a legendary performance at Live Aid. So they their sort of star quality was on the wane at that point. Freddie Mercury and Queen were, were kind of on the way out. But they absolutely lit Live Aid up. It was massive for them. And all of a sudden, Queen are right back as, as this huge band. Oh, cool. So it did wonders for them, but... A, a band it pretty much destroyed was um, Spandau Ballet. I don't know if you remember them from the 80s. Oh, yeah. But rather, what you should have done is gone out, done your hits, and left, right? Do your, do your greatest hits and leave. That's what Queen did. Queen went out and did all their big hits and then left. Spandau Ballet decided they were going to use their time slot to do three new tracks no one had ever heard before. So when they went out there, it just fell flat. When when you were in that crowd at Live Aid, you've been there for eight hours, and you're probably thinking, I need to take a piss and get a beer at some point. When <laughs> Stand Up Ballet come out with a new track you've never heard before, they're not doing True or Gold, you go, and that's me. So you, you leave it and go into the bar. So that's what happened to them. So it was a disaster for them. It really was. Yeah. But yeah, Live Aid was massive, man. It, it, was, it was huge. And they've tried to replicate wow. that since, but it's never really... Never really, same. No, yeah. they tried to. They tried to do the 20th anniversary of it in 2005, and no one really watched it. Mm. Um, and they did Live Eight, which was kind of like a um, a global awareness thing. And again, it just kind of sucked. It's like it was of the time, and I don't think you could replicate that again now. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. That makes sense. Well, guys, I hate to do this, but uh, Misty and I got a thing we got to do. Oh, no oh, worries, me, man. Yep. So We're gonna wrap it up. I'm going to duck out on you. But uh, this is cool. This is fun getting back together. Absolutely. 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 Next Sunday, new back. topic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm
Uh, Let's go. What do you want to do? What do you guys want to do next Sunday? How about we do potluck? We haven't done that ever. Uh, what's potluck? Pick whatever. Oh, we all come with our own story? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I mean, we come with. Let's go. Cool. That's the thing. I think I think we do that real well. We can come with whatever, uh, you know, or. Uh, It'll be a surprise. There you go. We'll, we'll even surprise the panel. There you go. So we won't know what we got to work on. That I like it. I like it. Everybody pick a history topic. Go. What's me? Let's go. The history of Spider Man with the, your. your oh, there, there you go. <laughs> history of Spider Man. Shit. So, well, well gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Always yeah. a pleasure, gents. It is uh, a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.